welcome back to the Rumbler for Sewing Room. Now, some time ago, I made a film about the secrets of a military tailor. And at the beginning of that, I showed you the collar of a Spencer, which I was in the process of making for Roz. Now, I confess that I didn't make a full film about this. But what I've decided to do is to try to catch up on that. So here we are. You'll see that I've been working on the collar, but that uh, still there's plenty to go. But let's go back to the beginning and look at the plans as they started. Now, I was looking around for a Spencer pattern and uh, I lighted on this one. Um, it's by Black Snail Patterns and it's their sewing pattern number 0319. And uh, what it provides is that uh, you may have either a Spencer or you may want to go to the full coat size. There's a picture of the Spencer by itself. Nice. It's got frogging on the front of it with Sue Tash. And I decided that that's what I wanted to do because I had that bit of uh, red that was left over from a uniform. And I thought it would be just enough to make a Spencer for Ros. So I sent off for the pattern and I got it on the uh, the internet and it was downloaded. That's all very well. It cuts the cost down. But my goodness me, it is enough a mess to try to put together. If you can get a pattern where it's fully uh, printed out on a large sheet of paper, my recommendation is to pay the extra money and get it like that. Because what happens is you receive a pattern where all the small pieces are like this. And so you then have to stick them all together until they're all fitting each other. Now, once they're stuck together, that's fine. But there's loads and loads of pieces They've got small registration lines, and so they do help you to actually make them fit together. But it took me half a day just to start the pattern off. And you can do without that hassle, really. So once all the pieces are stuck together, this is what you end up with. And the first two pieces you can see are all with regard to the uh, the skirts of the Redingut. But this is the operative part if you're looking at a Spencer. And you can see that what I've done is um, I've traced the original which is on the floor onto tissue paper. And uh, the sleeve you can see has suffered rather a lot because uh, what you have there is the pattern for the embroidery which is shown by the pattern underneath. Similarly, what you have is the front of the bodice, and what I have there is the interfacing and the bodice itself. And you can see that it has the pattern for the buttons and the soutache marked on the pattern there. And so I decided to start. Now, this is the bit that you're not going to see because I've already done it. So let's see if we can reconstruct uh, what I've been doing so far. Here's the collar with its lining in place. Here's the interlining, that's of glazed cotton. And then buckram, I use buckram all over the place but you see that I've just basted it in place for the time being because that's ready and waiting for sewing the soutache on the top of it. Also, by way of thickening, you'll see that I put a further buckram on the button stand here so that when it's all sewn together, it can you see the way it's already holding its shape better? You have to start with a collar. Now I'm lucky, I had a supply of very strong buckram. Um, it's the classic reddish colour that you will find on extant uh, garments and 
This stuff is probably from the 1950s. There's your starting point for the collar. You then have to cover it. And whilst it's not red, here's an example. So the buckram's underneath, and then you cover it with the material like that. Okay. And once that's achieved, you create a lining. I've padded this one so that uh, it'll feel soft on the inside for Roz when she's wearing it. And I have a little bit of silk left over that uh, tends to go with that. And so I've used that to fit on the inside of the collar. You can't go wrong if you get yourself a supply of buckram. It'll give body and strength to many parts of garments that you make. And it'll feel that much better both being worn and also during the process of construction. So there's the bodice all made up so far. The collar is sewn in position and then you will see that there's no stitching on the inside of that visible because I've put the lining there. But I did do all of this design beforehand and that's the secret to this. Don't try to do all of this um, once the garment's completely constructed. It ain't going to work. Now, I broke the rules slightly because what I wanted to do was to take this design down onto the back. So I did all of this. Then I did that last bit once I'd sewn the collar, collar in place so that we have a continuation of the soutache down onto the back panel. Now the uh, waistband is set there and on the pattern, it's all you get. Now, I didn't quite like that. I wanted to make it uh, a bit more decorative. So I just about had enough in terms of offcuts to create a peplum. There's no pattern for that. I made it out of cut out pieces. You can see it's all just at the moment pinned together. I think it looks quite nice. And also what I've done is I've pinned in position some black soutache braid, which will provide a highlight. That's the nice thing about making stuff yourself is that you can make your decisions uh, according to what you want them to be rather than what the pattern tells you. Uh, just use the pattern to achieve what you want to achieve. Looking at this design, of course, it was covered buttons that were envisaged by the people who made it. It became quite fashionable for women to wear military-inspired clothing. But Ros decided that she didn't want any buttons, and so I'll have to just concentrate on the soutache pattern. Now, the pattern is found not only on the front of the bodice, but also on the sleeves. And I decided that since the pattern which uh, is designed for the sleeves is the larger, more open style, that's the one that I have a go at first. The exasperating thing about doing these soutache patterns is that it's one continuous line that keeps snaking around the pattern backwards and forwards. And so you have to have on hand one long piece of soutache. That takes a little bit of uh, organising to start with, but you do get used to it. I strongly recommend that you do some practice pieces uh, because you may have to make some uh, policy decisions about how you're going to lay the suit ash onto the, the cloth. What I found was that some corners were so tight that instead of turning the corner and stretching the suit ash, I had to turn it over. Um, you're just going to have to experiment to find something that suits you. A little bit of private information. I had to do it three times to get it how I wanted to do it. But now it's fine. The way I do it is I take the panel. Now you'll see here that what I've done is I've stretched it on an embroidery frame and just tacked it in position so it can be tightened up. And you'll see I've got my buckram on the back there. And I've also got a lot of stitching here. 
In order to be able to place this, uh, the designs on both the sleeves are the same, I transferred it onto a tissue pattern. And there you can see what I did was once I pinned it in place, I sewed the, the lines of stitching to reflect the pattern and created these lines of stitching. They're in the same colour cotton as the soutache is, so that once I lay it on top and stitch it in place, it won't be visible. It makes it so much easier than trying to do it on your lap, loose. And after you've spent all those hours sewing it on, this is what you end up with. And then going over onto the back, you can see the buckram, which is supporting all of that embroidery. Because there are times when, as you're sewing it on, you're needing to pull the cotton quite tight to make sure that it sits flat. You'll also see that um, once it's been pulled through, I frayed the ends so that uh, they don't stay uh, as a visible lump underneath. Now's my big confession. Because of the timetabling on getting Ros to the ball that we were going to for the 20th anniversary of my dancing club, I'm afraid the filming went awry and uh, I've got another repetition of gaps. So I've decided that what I will do is show you the finished article and describe what I did. There's not a lot more else to it. Uh, it's simply completing the garment. Here it is. Right, I've finished all of the patterning on the front and you can see that it was in fact a very detailed pattern with the, the, the soutache having to go across, come over here, round, under there, over the top of that, around, under that, around and <laughs> backwards. And I was trying to find ways of making all those little circles the same size. My eventual answer was to have the top of a pen and I held it against the cloth and wrapped the soutache round it so that I always knew that that little gap, that circle, was the same size for all of them. Uh, it's not perfect. It's my first go at this sort of decoration. But I think it's come out all right. And uh, from the inherited gear that I got, I had this lovely double lion's head clip which I think is a nice finishing touch. So now, when Ros and I go out, we're almost matching. <laughs>